so if you don't know i have recently suffered a setback with my natural hair because of some kinky twists that i put into my hair and i've come out here and told you what the setback was however i have decided that i'll come out here and just do the q a that i wanted to do you know some weeks back because now you know you guys have got questions about the challenge and i understand you know the questions that you have some of you have you know thrown those questions at me some of them are you know questions and advice that i will come up with just based on you know what i've experienced with the challenge now if you haven't seen that video go check it out for the details however in a nutshell i prepped my hair to get into a protective style put in some spring twists and yeah my hair didn't like it so it was dry um i had to take it out prematurely because when i took out one twist it was really you know the hair was not feeling good and then i got the split ends the you know single strand knots and just really you know a lot of dryness the split ends and the single strand knots are mainly due to the prep actually the detangling that i did in preparation for the protective style so i suffered a setback and i needed to actually trim my hair so i've lost a bit of length and my hair has regressed a little bit when it comes to softness and moisture so i have to actually retrain my hair um when it comes to moisture i've done videos how to moisture how to um moisture train your hair um go check those out however in this video i'm just answering questions from you guys not exact questions but some questions were similar so i'll just speak about particular topics based on your questions if that makes sense the routine that i uh came up with or that i know to work because i've done it in the past is pretty much leaving your hair alone and what we're doing is we're um, putting our hair in conros we're putting our hair in twists we're putting our hair in braids pick a style that works for you and leave it alone for as long as you can realistically okay now i just want to come out here and say that the best style that you can do is with your own hair i said it then in the video um and i'm gonna say it now however i do recommend cornrows so putting your hair in cornrows small size cornrows because you want to reduce the matting um and then you want to just look after your hair while in those cornrows you can wear a wig head scarves you know head wraps whatever you need to do if the hair is getting a bit old however you want to take care of your hair while in the cornrows and try and push to three months before you take down the style i know it's not for everybody and like i said in that video it's not for everybody just be mindful of what works for you and what works with your lifestyle with your hair and what you can manage the major thing is going to be the takedown because no point looking after your hair all this while and then the takedown is a fail. Um, so just be careful about the takedown, okay? You want to really take down the hair like silk. I've put my hair in braids. So this is actually, this is actually clippings. So I've put my hair in braids in there and I'm going to actually keep them in for three months so that I can show you the whole process, including the takedown, okay? So watch out for that one. However, let's get into the questions that you guys had me. So first question is, can you use twists and braids? The answer is yes. Twists with your own hair, braids with your own hair, yes. With twists, uh, you will not be able to go three months with twists, okay? So <laughs> for me, I can go up to a month with twists, but after that, it's really bad. I need to retwist the hair. So just see what works for you when it comes to twists you might need to take them out earlier if you can go a little bit um further before you take them down well and good however twist with your own hair do not last long at all so once you twist your hair i wash my hair in the mini twists deep condition you know whatever moisturize and then i actually go ahead to stretch the hair with braids so i actually braid the twists to stretch it I've done a separate video how to actually detangle your hair after a wash with mini twists. Go check it out for details. However, if you don't know how to do that, then don't do mini twists. Do medium twists if it's easier for you to deal with, okay? Mini twists can be a challenge, particularly with unraveling and detangling and retwisting. So be mindful of that. Braids with your own hair can last three months. However, you might need to actually, you know, cover your head up with a headscarf you know, headband, wig, you know, hats, whatever you've got around the house, particularly towards the end of the challenge, right? 
in the beginning you can style it just depending like for me i don't like to do braids because braids make my hair really thin or look very thin and i can't really i don't like the style that braids gives me that's why i don't do braids routinely and i won't be starting now i'm just doing these braids to show you guys you know what you can do if you're really wanting to grow your hair however for me i'm a twisted natural i love twists i am transitioning myself out of mini twists into midi twists maybe larger twists however um i can understand someone that loves braids uses braids they can be beneficial so you wash the the braids or the twists you know once a month uh deep condition and moisturize and then you know back into your wig or whatever hat whatever you and then take them down so you can do braids okay you can do twists however there's going to be variations particularly twists don't last as long braids longer braids last longer because they hold the shed hair there braids last longer because it's a three strand cord you know and the tangles will actually be a little bit less with braids um because i don't know the hair is just it's got no room to move around as much as you get with twists other styles you can do of course the cornrows i've spoken about the cornrows guys cornrows are pretty much braids but just lying down okay and yeah so those are those are the options when it comes to your own hair doing the challenge with your own hair can i use synthetic hair <sighs> you can use synthetic hair however as you've seen i've had a setback with synthetic hair so i'll say to you if you don't know what you're doing with synthetic hair don't do it don't don't do what i've done don't follow anyone else unless this is something that you've tried and tested and you can sort of test a few things on one piece of hair however if you want to use synthetic hair number one advice is to use hair that is smooth so if you can use canecalone you know silky hair synthetic hair that's going to be the best i've actually watched a video by is it a cosmetologist or i um, can't remember what her qualification was but she knew what she was talking about and she actually says that the kinkier textured hair is not very good as in mali braid you know kinky braids you know that kind of hair it's not very good for type 4 particularly fine hair because it's quite rough so it can cause dryness it can really you know um interrupt your progress if you may however she does recommend smoother hair okay smoother hair um for braids or twists or whatever i don't use smoother hair because <laughs> i can't twist and i can't braid so the grip is it doesn't work unless i sort of do like a crochet style of which that's now getting a bit too complicated for me however if you're someone that can braid you can twist you can use that particular that particular synthetic hair if you want to use spring twists or a kinkier texture i'm gonna recommend some I'll just show you i'll just show you guys so this is this is the hair that i used okay this is the spring twist that i use and on first look this hair is actually smooth so i did a lot of research for me to be able to pick the style okay and i don't know if you can tell it's actually quite smooth to touch so if you're gonna try to braid your hair with this stuff don't separate it don't separate it one and actually twist it so that it falls within the curl don't twist it against the curl because that interrupts the smoothness and makes it it makes it more rough however if you don't separate it and you actually follow the curl this hair can actually work it's actually not too bad it actually feels like normal can I cologne hair all right so that's what i'm going to advise you of course wash the hair and condition the hair okay i used apple cider vinegar initially when i washed these and condition the hair you can just use like a rinse out conditioner and put some conditioner on there and then go ahead to moisturize the hair so put leave in put your castor oil you know lots of product and then go ahead to twist with this one i'm gonna recommend to you guys another type of synthetic hair that i have found and this will be my preferred moving forward free tress braid pre fluffed this one okay this is the softest 
synthetic hair I've ever found. I, synthetic kinky hair. This is how it looks like. And I like it because it's not particularly very kinky. I don't know if you can tell, but it actually still has, it's almost like a type four, A kind of curl in it. So it actually is not just like that, the way Marley braid is. It's actually quite smooth in the sense that it's still kinky, but you can actually get some kind of a smoothness while still being able to get the grip that you want. And same with same with the spring twists, go ahead to twist in the direction of the twist. So let the, the, the hair fall into its natural curl. If you do it the other way, if you separate it, it gets rougher, okay? And it creates a rougher texture, roughness, etc. When I went ahead to moisturize the, the tress, this one that I just showed you, guys, it even gets softer. Now, don't get me wrong, it doesn't feel like human hair. It's not like silk, no. But it's the softest, kinky textured hair I have ever used or I've ever been in contact with. So moving forward, this is my baby. This is what I'm gonna use. You guys can not tell, but I put it in castor oil and a few days later, it was so soft. Like this, honestly, this, this is very close to what our hair feels like. So this is what I would do or say about synthetic hair. I hope this helps. Another thing I'll say about synthetic hair is that now you can keep it in for longer. However, the thing that I'm gonna say and maybe just moving forward to be safe is one, to not wash your hair while in these twists. I mean, I haven't tried washing my hair with this particular hair. I'm gonna give it a go with one or two twists and see how it goes. But when, when I twisted my hair with a spring twist, this one, Girl, the unraveling was a nightmare. And it's part of, that's why I suffered a bit of a setback as well, because the unraveling was a nightmare. It was just so difficult to try and unravel the kinky twist. So I don't know how this one would fit, would fit, is that the word? However, just to be safe, just don't wash the hair. Cleanse your scalp, okay, you can wash your scalp. Um, you know, if you've got one of those shower heads that you can move around, just concentrate on the scalp, let it go, leave this dry, all right? Or, you know, I've shown you guys how to use a brush, ball bristle brush to cleanse your scalp. Or you can go ahead and use a bit of apple cider vinegar mixed with water or witch hazel, of course, we know about all those. So there's options for you there if your scalp is tender and you, are, you need to wash more frequently. I don't necessarily need to wash as often as weekly, for example. Um, using essential oils helps me with dandruff, itchiness, all that kind of stuff. So I don't need to do much with my scalp for at least a month other than use my oil with essential oils. Now, the big question here is what do we do about moisture? Because the reason why a lot of us have a setback with the, or why I had a setback with the synthetic hair is because it was really just drying my hair out and I couldn't deep condition my hair, you know and I couldn't moisturize with heat, moidration, my moidration technique. However, one of you subscribers actually said you can steam the hair. So that's an option where you just, I would sort of put my glycerin, like go to town with moisturizing. If you just wanna, yeah, just <laughs> moisturize the heck out of your hair with this synthetic hair. Put your glycerin, put your leave in, right? And then go ahead to um, steam. I've got a steamer, so it's a facial steamer, but you can just use it with your hair and just steam the hair, steam the hair, steam the hair, steam the hair. If it's practical, you might, you could actually put the hair in a plastic bag. If you've got a big plastic bag and just tie it up here and just allow that steam to get into the hair a little bit more. Of course, I've shared with you guys a mixture where I mix the glycerin, the water, the leave-in conditioner and oil and just use that mixture to moisturize the hair as a whole. However, you know, try a few things, see what works for you. However, that's the steaming is what's going to replace the infusion of moisture at on, on wash day. So the steaming hopefully is hot enough or warm enough to open the cuticle and allow some moisture in. Of course, it's not the best way of moisture of hydrating the hair, 
washing your hair is the best way. However, it's better than nothing, okay? So try it out, see how it goes. Month, you know, six weeks after trying this, you know, unravel one, see how your hair feels, put it back in. Try and unravel a hair, piece of hair that is, what's the word? Or, or, the, or the, an area of hair that is drier than the rest of the hair. That way you really, you know, you know if it's drying your hair out or not. That's on synthetic hair. So um, I don't know what else there, there is to say. I'll do another, I'll do a live as well. So you guys can ask me specific questions if you have any more. But that's what I have to say on synthetic hair. The best styling technique or styling protective style is your own hair. However, if you want to use synthetic hair, these are the methods, the tricks, the tips that I've just shared. Someone asked me about a TWA. If you've got a TWA, your hair is really already protective because it's not rubbing against anything. It's up there. So I've got nothing to tell you, like just rock your hair, enjoy it. Don't try to squeeze it into a braid or crochet or whatever. just leave your hair alone. Like. I'm not an advocate to try and braid teeny weeny afros, like just enjoy that stage and that's that. Can I wear a sew-in? No, uh, well, you can, but I would say don't do it because I believe that the thread of a sew-in actually causes damage, one. Number two, your scalp is not breathing quite a bit because it's actually covering the whole thing. It's different from a wig, it's in and out, it's in and out, right? Um, but the, the weave kind of sits a little bit in a way, especially if you have a closure, if you have a closure in that, I don't think it breathes as well. It's also a little bit different to crochet because crochet, you really, the scalp is out there. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but when you do weaves, they kind of, each time I've done a weave, it hasn't been good. The takedown was tedious, took a lot of my hair down, broke my hair off in the past when I've done weaves, particularly at the, the sew, the sewing. I don't know if that makes sense. So I would say no to weaves. Another thing with weaves is that you're not able to really wash effectively. I mean, it's the same thing with braids, but with weaves, it's even harder, you know, because yeah, it, it's just tricky. I wouldn't say, I mean, weaves for me, uh, it, it's a little bit of a compounded disadvantage. You've got the thread that you're working with. You've got the knotting at the thread when it comes to takedown and then the inability to access your scalp as well. So dealing with dryness during the challenge. Why is your hair dry? I mean, the only people that should be struggling with dryness should be the people with synthetic hair. And I've just shared with you guys tips on how to try and keep your hair moisture as well in the synthetic hair. So if you are just having your own hair, you shouldn't have dry hair. Like if, if the spritzing, for example, cornrows, right? You're spritzing the glycerin, it's not working. Use the method where I showed you guys how to put, you put glycerin, leave-in conditioner, oil shake it up and pour that onto your cornrows it will really go when you do this to your cornrow you should go on the cornrow and i know people are scared conditioner etc when you go to wash your hair rinse it out rinse it out real good rinse out the nape real good so that you don't have residues of conditioner and whatever try and keep your cornrows small okay the smaller the less matting the less accumulation of lint and whatever um and your takedown will be easier, okay? So that's that. Dealing with freeze, how do I deal with freeze and keep my hair in for long? I can understand particularly for people that are wearing their own hair with either braids, twists, or cornrows, particularly twists, it can be just crazy. I will share a video, if not already, of how I installed braids and how I did my best to minimize freeze. However, use something like a custard, some people will use like humectant gels to try and clump the hair and also like, you know, keep it compact in some way so that there's no free flyaways going about. Um, never ever sleep just on a normal pillowcase. Use a silk pillowcase or satin pillowcase. And if you can, sleep in a scarf like this one because if you sleep with this, it keeps the hair down like this. Freeze is, is um, unavoidable. Like once your hair starts getting frizzy, you now start, you have to start incorporating your headband with your scarves, your um, just normal headbands, bun, put the hair up in a bun and you know, manage like that. However, if you can't take the freeze girl, take the hair out. Like this is not a, 
this is not an imprisonment challenge like it's a challenge yeah to try and get to the three months however if it's gonna benefit you more to actually take your hair down sooner do that you know the benefit is really in the takedown like actually retaining the length that you have kept that's where the challenge is mainly going to you know be catapulted into life if, if you may like everything is not really gonna make sense if you can't retain your length at the takedown so if you feel like okay this is gonna impede my takedown this is gonna mess things up i'm not gonna be able to be able to have the patience to take out one corner at a time and just just take the hair down when you feel like you should as long as you're gentle when you're taking your hair down and you're you know taking it like you're not rough and breaking your hair off it, it's fine to take the hair out sooner okay it doesn't have to be specifically three months just you know try and keep it in as much as you can and take down gently that's the point of this challenge i don't wear wigs what should i do i just gave you options twist with your own hair braids with your own hair synthetic hair um like i say twists or braids with synthetic hair okay so you have options there moisturizing i don't even know what else to tell you i'll just insert a, a clip here showing you guys how I moisturize braids I've done this before and I've shared videos how to share how to moisturize twists so I, I'm not sure why you're still having questions with this the, the best way is to just mix your ingredients together if you have synthetic hair and you know just apply that mixture with cornrows same thing as well and also even with braids honestly it works even with twists the method of combining your glycerin distilled water leaving oil Combining that and putting that on your hair is the easiest way. So just do that regardless of the style that you had, that you have. Protecting the ends in cornrows. Mm. This is a good one. I had to actually think a little bit about this. Maybe when you do your cornrows, instead of plating the hair all the way to the end, leave it here, leave it at the, at the nape. And then once you're done cornrowing up to the nape, then do one braid and sort of tuck it in. So that is just one tucking. That way you're protecting your hair. Another way is maybe to crochet it into the cornrow, but I don't know how carefully you can do that. That's an option. But yeah, maybe the plating up to here might work better and then um, tucking, tucking one, one end in, if you may. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. How to avoid matting. So there's two main things that will help you avoid matting. Okay, the first one is to braid your hair. The braids mat less than twists. One. Number two is to do smaller cornrows. For example, if you're doing cornrows, do smaller ones. That way, there's not this big space that the shed hair and gunk can sort of sit in. Okay, that just create a, like, a, like a dump full lint and whatever. So if it's smaller cornrows, you reduce matting there. When you're washing your hair, don't go, just try and use the squeezing motion. If it's cornrows, just squeeze the hair, squeeze, let the water do the job, okay? Same thing if it's twists, you know, squeeze, squeeze. If it's braids, just squeeze, squeeze. Then, you know, you go from there. If you're wearing twists or braids with your own hair, you can sort of braid um, clusters of the twists and the braids so that when you wash it, it's within a braid, if that makes sense. So you're braiding the twists so the hair is not just in twists and, you know, going everywhere. I don't know if that makes sense. That will reduce matting. But matting is, you know, something that can be problematic. The other major, 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 major thing to help you with the takedown, to reduce, not reduce matting, but make the detangling easier is to moisturize your hair. Do not allow your hair to get dry at all at all the moment your hair gets dry it's gonna be stiff it's gonna be brittle it's gonna be prone to breakage not a good idea so moisture is probably the biggest thing in this challenge when it comes to really keeping your hair healthy the other question was about takedown as well i guess i've already spoken to that already like keep your hair moisturized it's gonna help with the takedown when I do take down my hair and it's super moisturized, I can actually do it dry because it's so moisturized. It is so, 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 so moisturized. If you are not able to take your hair down 
um, like dry because it's not as moisturized, no problem at all. Put conditioner in, put a cup onto the hair, let it sit and warm up and, you know, separate, expand the hair a little bit. And that helps to start re like detangling the hair and removing some of that matting that can happen. But that is probably, you know, one of the be better ways, I think, to actually take down your hair. I've done videos in the past on how to take down your cornrows. Um, go have a check. But if you can't, if, if your hair has not been moisturized during the challenge, don't try to take it down dry. If your hair is well and truly moisturized, you've got the weighing down, you've got the greasiness, the softness, you might actually be successful taking it down dry. And I have done that just using an oil because it's stretched, okay? The hair is stretched when it's dry. You've got less shrinkage and less tangles to play, to, 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 um, like hinder you, okay? Which is different when the hair is wet. Yes, it's more flexible. Yes, the hair is expanded. Yes, you know, the, the tangles are melting, but you're also fighting against sh uh, shrinkage, which causes tangles. So decide which one works better for you, okay? There's no Bible here. I'm just giving you guys ideas. Now, the frizz that comes after moisturizing braids, particularly if you use my method where I deep condition, I moisturize with heat, it's tricky but once the hair has been moisturized and you know it's kind of dried etc wear these things these things help to just keep things in twists in um like in place not in twists but keep your twists in place and just light lay things down a little bit um and another thing like i said if you use a custard or a, 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 like a humectant gel that can help to reduce the frizz even mead uh, mid challenge okay so you can go ahead and just apply like a gel or a custard and allow that to set and that actually helps to keep the frizz a little bit you know controlled however like i said before don't do this when you're dealing with your hair wash it in braids if you have to sleep with a uh, silk scarf silk pillowcase and never ever ever allow your hair to dry is crochet an option and i'm gonna say yes crochet is is an option you just need to do it well for me crochet it's the manipulation the the hook what do you call the crochet needle um and also the hair that you're using and the knot that you're tying after the crochet so if you can use a larger portion of hair when you do your crochet so in, instead of taking little bits of hair tying it little bits of hair if you take a chunkier piece of hair like this one crochet that one and tie it let's just see how this works crochet that one and tie it that way it's not like an, a big knot uh, it's not like a small knot where it's maybe too tight or putting too much pressure or rubbing too harshly on your actual hair so that's what I would say about crochet um, I wouldn't really be washing crochet hair per se like I'm trying to think how that would work no I, I wouldn't I wouldn't really wash crochet hair um, no <laughs> let's not wash crochet hair so treat crochet hair like the twist with synthetic hair so just concentrate on the scalp um, and just leave the rest of the hair alone particularly at the knot I feel like if we're gonna wet the knot then yeah that could cause problems when you moisturize your hair with crochet you might want to actually just go in there and steam the hair okay that way it's not you're not dealing with too much what's the word too much moisture as in actually wetting the hair so you might need to steam more often um i'll come out here and do a specific video particularly in winter when i do some crochet hair so watch out for that one however Crochet, I wouldn't say I can say too much about it. I don't have much experience personally on it. So maybe just try the braids, twists, and the other styles that I've recommended. Twists versus cornrows. Which one is best for aggressive length retention? Girl, it doesn't matter. What matters is the takedown and the handling of the hair. Of course, if a twist, if when you have twists you are gentle with your hair and you don't break your hair and you know you're diligent like that 
it will help you retain length. However, if you're wearing um, cornrows, for example, even if you lasted three months with cornrows as opposed to a month with twists, if the takedown with the cornrows is harsh, you know, it's not going to balance out. Like it's neither, it, like the cornrows are not going to be better, even if they've been in your hair for longer. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, how you handle, of course, the more you handle your hair, as in with twists, the more opportunities you have to break it and, you know, have setbacks, etc. So we're trying not to handle our hair too much, but you have the disadvantage here of cornrows, which you can keep for longer. However, when it comes to takedown, it's more challenging. So it's just a matter of which one are you willing to be more consistent with. That's where your aggressive length will come from. Okay, I'm not going to decide that for you because that's your personal, that's something you need to discover for yourself. So pretty much in a nutshell, if you cannot commit to a diligent, patient, gentle takedown after three months, don't go for three months. Choose a style that, actually choose any style, however, maybe take it down sooner. So you don't have to deal with all like being super careful. However, if you're someone who can be diligent and the takedown for me is really one, the takedown is just one, for example, cornrows, one cornrow at a time. Untangle, untangle, take your time. It would, it could take you 30 minutes, just one cornrow. When all the, all the tangles are out, shed hairs are out, all the gunk is out, put it in a flat twist and then in a flat, yeah, flat twist and then go to the next corner. So we're not taking all the hair out and then trying to detangle all the hair. That's a recipe for disaster. So one corner, untangle, retwist. Same thing with the braids. You know, I mean, with braids, you can be a little bit flexible because I mean, you can remove all the braids, put them in twists, put it up and then start dealing with it one by one, right? However, the, the idea here is you can't put yourself in a situation where you're overwhelmed by the takedown, right? You want to take down one piece at a time, unravel it, finish detangling it, and then um, on to the next one. There was a question about how are people going to learn how to look after their hair if, um, what did she say? Like if, if they're keeping their hair three months locked away, look, you are learning about your hair while it's in a protective style. You're washing, you're cleansing, you're deep conditioning, right? You're moisturizing. You are, you prepped your hair to put it in the, in the style. You are also going to be taking down the hair. So you are learning about your hair within this process. I think sometimes people think in order to learn about your hair, you need to be in your hair every week. No, you don't need to be in your hair in your hair every week for you to be able to have skills or learn skills of how to look after your hair. So that's that. Number two, this routine is mainly for naturals that are wanting to grow their hair longer, not necessarily for someone that's new on the blog and I've got no idea and this is the challenge I want to do. You need some skills in order to pull this off, okay? So just in case you're wondering, like, this is not for everyone, I understand. This is not for everyone. However, if you can commit and you know promise yourself to follow through with certain things, then you might actually be successful and see amazing results. Let's see how I go with my braids for the three months. If you have any other questions for me, drop it in the comment section. Let me know if you guys still want a live because I've exhausted quite a lot of information in this video. However, until next time, it's Coily Diaries. Bye.